caffeine and fertility. How much is okay? Zero? Maybe a little bit? How much is okay? So my patients ask me about caffeine and fertility almost every day, and we are going to go over the research. We're going to go over evidence. We're going to go over how Eastern medicine thinks about caffeine. I'll teach you how to figure out how much caffeine is in those drinks that you're having, and you will learn so much today about caffeine and your fertility. I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. I'm a double board certified OBGYN and reproductive endocrinologist helping people build families and answer questions about caffeine for over 20 years. Welcome to the Baby or Bust Fertility Podcast. This is a podcast all about reproductive health. Interviews, in-depth discussions every week. Come and listen to the Baby or Bust Fertility Podcast where you'll always learn more about your reproductive health. I live and work in Seattle, and with the gray, gloomy winter days, believe me, Seattleites love their coffee, and it can be really stressful when people are asking me if I'm going to tell them to completely quit their coffee because they love it so much. So I want to go through the evidence here. We're going to go through the evidence or a Western medicine evidence-based approach to caffeine and fertility. You know, what do the studies show us? Number two, we're going to go through an Eastern medicine approach to caffeine because you know what? It might be a little bit different. And I think you might want to learn a little bit about that. Number three, I want you to know how much caffeine is in some of the things that you're drinking. So how can you modify it if you don't know exactly how much caffeine you're having. And there's some wonderful resources and lists where you can learn more about what you're actually consuming. And then finally, I'm going to end this video with my personal recommendations, what I tell my patients. Now, remember, you have to talk to your doctor about your personal situation, but I'm happy to share with you what I share with my patients. So let's go through the evidence. What is a Western medicine approach to caffeine and fertility say? Well, the worry about caffeine started from a 1988 study from Lancet Journal, which is a well-respected journal in which it was shown that people who had more than one cup of coffee a day were 50% less likely to conceive this is where the worry about caffeine and fertility really started from. And this study is quoted to this day. It's not the best study in the world. It's about 100 patients, 104 patients, and they had been trying to conceive for three months, which is not technically inf infertile. They took a survey to see how much caffeine and coffee they were drinking, and then they were watched over the next six months to see if they conceived or not. And the results showed that if you had more than what one cup of coffee a day, that was considered a high caffeine intake, that they were 50% less likely to conceive compared to people who had less than one cup of coffee a day. So that is where this worry comes from. And that's a 1988 study. And since then, people have been trying to say, is this really true? Because seems pretty extreme. And quite honestly, research since then has not shown the same thing. So one of the largest prospective studies to look at caffeine and fertility was published in 2017. It was a Danish study looking at over 3,000 people that were trying to conceive and comparing different caffeine intakes. They didn't just look at coffee. They looked at coffee, tea, and soda, and they were trying to estimate exactly how much caffeine and milligrams people were taking in and seeing if it impacted how long it took them to conceive over time. And they they didn't see a difference. So they compared women who had over 300 milligrams of caffeine per day and that did not take those people longer to conceive compared to women who had less than 100 milligrams of caffeine per day. Another way to try to answer a question scientifically is to gather a lot of studies together in a type of research paper called a meta-analysis. And an interesting meta-analysis that came out in 2017 looked at a lot of different papers, I think it's about 64 papers, and found that caffeine intake did not impact time to conception, but that higher levels of caffeine intake in pregnancy were associated with a slightly higher risk of miscarriage. And that was seen with intake of over 300 milligrams of caffeine a day. And if someone had even over 600 milligrams of caffeine a day, it was an even higher risk of miscarriage. So even though that very early study in 1988 with only 100 people did show decreased fertility with coffee intake. Multiple studies since then, even larger sample sizes and meta-analysis where you're gathering information, did not show an impact on fertility, specifically in women. 
But once you're pregnant, high levels of caffeine intake can be associated with a slightly higher miscarriage risk. What about men? Well, studies have really not shown an impact on caffeine and fertility in men or sperm parameters. A 2018 large meta-analysis looked at almost 100 different papers and looking at lifestyle impact for men and sperm parameters and fertility. So they looked at not only caffeine, but alcohol, smoking, a lot of other lifestyle choices. And they did not see that specifically caffeine was associated with an increased risk of fertility issues. We'll get back to talking about caffeine and fertility in just a second. I want to remind you how important it is to support the show and how can you do that? You can share this episode with someone who wants to learn about caffeine and fertility. And if you have ever found value like in this episode or other episodes of the baby or bus podcast please give a review maybe a five-star review if you feel like it write a little something wherever you are listening to the podcast it really helps others find it and get questions for their reproductive health So we've gone over some of the studies and the overall trends that I saw in the studies that I'm reading, but what does ASRM say? ASRM, or the American Society of Reproductive Medicine, is our professional medical group that is um, for reproductive endocrinologists or fertility doctors like me. It's really nice because they often will kind of comb through the data and come out with committee opinions on recommendations. And so they came out with a committee opinion on optimizing natural fertility, and this is what they say about caffeine. During pregnancy, caffeine consumption of over over 200 to 300 milligrams per day, about two or three cups per day, may increase the risk of miscarriage, but does not affect the risk of congenital anomalies or birth defects. Overall, moderate caffeine consumption of one to two cups of coffee per day or its equivalent before or during pregnancy has no apparent adverse effects on fertility or pregnancy outcomes. Caffeine consumption has no impact on sperm parameters in men. So for us in Seattle that get out of bed for a cup of coffee in the morning. This is actually very reassuring when you're trying to conceive, but then when you do get pregnant, you should really cut back and maybe choose a lower caffeinated option. So now we know what the evidence shows, and that's really a Western medicine approach to caffeine and fertility. But what's interesting is an Eastern approach to caffeine and fertility actually has a very, very different conclusion. I learned so much about Eastern medicine when I co-authored a book, Integrative Fertility, Planting the Seeds of Pregnancy, Integrative Fertility with the licensed acupuncturist and dear friend, Stephanie Gianarelli. She wrote everything in the book from an Eastern medicine approach. And I wrote everything from a Western medicine approach. And we agreed on so many things as far as lifestyle optimization, except for caffeine. (laughs) So from an Eastern medicine approach, really caffeine is seen as draining of energy. You know, it speeds up your heart rate. It might constrict your blood vessels. It gives you energy, but it's sort of wasted energy. And like you, you feel good, concentration and kind of get stuff done. But then afterwards you kind of have that drop in energy. So in general, Stephanie Gianarelli, my dear friend and acupuncturist, you know, when we were writing the book, she's like, I don't like caffeine for my patients that are trying to conceive. And I said, well, the evidence says a little bit is okay. And so I just wanted to let you know from an Eastern medicine perspective, the recommendation is to really, really limit it and maybe a little bit of green tea, but absolutely not for coffee. So just want to let you know. That was a really amazing experience to write that book with Stephanie. We share a lot of patients and I love an integrative approach to fertility. So you should check out that book. It's on Amazon. And please let me know in comments here if you want to learn more about an Eastern approach to care. It's not something that I am trained in. I'm not a licensed acupuncturist, but I have a great appreciation for it. And so let me know if you want to learn more about that. So if you are thinking about modifying how much caffeine you have or really limiting it, it's important to know how much caffeine is in the things that you're drinking. And so learning more about that can really help you figure out exactly what you're consuming and help you modify if that's what's right for you. And so there's some wonderful resources online that help list the type of drink that you're having and how much caffeine is in it. More examples are you could go to Starbucks and get two coffees that are kind of the same size, but have dramatically different caffeine amounts. So a grande latte at Starbucks has about 150 milligrams of caffeine, whereas a grande or 16 ounce cold brew can have as much as 280 milligrams of caffeine. Black tea 
eight ounces of black tea can have anywhere from about 40 to 80 milligrams of caffeine. So switching to tea is a great way to get a little bit of caffeine, but decrease the amount that you're having each day. Coke or a lot of sodas have about the same, about 45 milligrams of caffeine in them. But a Red Bull can have over 100 milligrams of caffeine and about the same amount of soda. And don't forget about other sources of caffeine like chocolate, which is absolutely delicious. Just so you know, milk chocolate has less caffeine than dark chocolate. So 1.5 ounces of milk chocolate has less than 10 milligrams of caffeine, but a uh, same amount, 1.5 ounces of dark chocolate can have up to 30 milligrams of caffeine in it. So there's a bunch of resources online that can teach you how much caffeine is in what you're drinking. The Mayo Clinic has a great resource. And then there's another one called just caffeine chart that you can find in a search engine. So how much caffeine is too much? Honestly, over four cups of coffee a day can be associated with a lot of side effects, fast heart rate, insomnia, jitters, feeling restless, anxiety. If you're drinking enough caffeine that you're starting to have these side effects, it's really time to cut back. Finally, what do I tell my patients? Well, I think my patients would absolutely revolt if I told them they couldn't have any caffeine because again, we're in Seattle and just these winters are just very gray. It's lovely to have a cup of coffee in the morning. So I, in general, for most people, when you're trying to conceive, one or two cups of coffee in the morning is absolutely fine. And then when you do conceive, you might really want to cut back just because there has been association with high caffeine intake and increase risk of miscarriage, but make sure and talk to your doctor to find out what is right for you. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I love answering questions about lifestyle optimization and caffeine is such a common question and so often misunderstood. Find this episode and all others on my website, drlaurashaheen.com. Find more educational content on my YouTube channel and Instagram. I just love teaching. Thank you to our friends at Seattle Sperm Bank and Braves Runs Production for sponsoring the show. Thank you to my team at Audiotocracy for incredible production. This is your host, Dr. Laura Shaheen. And until next week, wishing you love, luck, and pineapples.